I will usually try and summarize the most important message somewhere on the page, and I'll put it in my own words. So this is one really important skill that I always use when I'm reading like complicated essays or speeches in order to get like good grades on tests, on essays that you're writing, and this will help you out in college as well. So Teach for America actually started in 1990, and it was the idea of our CEO and founder, Wendy Kopp. It was her senior thesis at Princeton University. And what she was really seeking to do was to create a core um, of teachers from all backgrounds and all majors who were committed to teaching and working in our nation's lowest performing schools, our highest need schools. How could you summarize all of those lessons in one single sentence? The fact that you graduated from Harvard means that you haven't failed. Excellent. Um, but yeah, the reason why Teach for America came to Delaware and why um, you know, we partnered with so many folks in this community and, and across the state um, is the fact that still today, um, where kids grow up in Delaware still far too often determines the educational opportunities that, that they receive. And so we're really committed to being a part of many of the changes taking place to help ensure that kids, regardless of where they grow up, what zip code is in their address, have that opportunity to receive an excellent education. So just go ahead and explain the irony in that text. The students here at Howard High School, um, I think about 70% of them come from low-income neighborhoods. They, many of them qualify for free and reduced lunch. And sometimes they just haven't had the kind of um, like really intensive educational experiences um, before. Um, they come from varied, very varied backgrounds. And what we try to do is we try to say, okay, like this is where you come from. And what we're going to do now is sort of raise that up a level. Like no matter where you're from, we want you to have the kind of the same kind of education that they're getting at like any kind of upper level advanced school that there is out there. So my mission as a teacher is not only to sort of teach their curriculum, but to really prepare them for college because that's the sort of end goal that I have in mind. And if they're going to succeed in college, they're going to need to know more than just the curriculum. They're going to need to have um, skills like being able to cope with failure, um, be able to sort of have the kind of self-control that they will like, go home and do their homework instead of watching television. So I try to keep that whole picture in mind. Like, what do these kids need so that they can get to college? This is sort of the first time that we've really pushed ourselves to that really high level text. You read the same thing that Harvard College graduates heard. And you comprehended it on the same level, or were trying to, as those college graduates. Now, before you guys leave, I want you You know, to if you look at any great teacher um, working in our schools, um, they share the qualities of any great leader in, in any setting. And so we're really working to find great leaders, regardless of their, of their background or their major, um, who share a lot of the qualities and characteristics of the most high-performing teachers that you see um, in our school. So folks who, who have a really strong, um, really strong perseverance, who are able to build relationships in diverse settings, are able to influence and, and motivate others, um, and who also have a really deep commitment uh, to this work. Today we're practicing money and we need somebody to remind us, why are we learning about money? Why do we even do that? If we go to the store and we get back all these five coins, we want to be able to know how much we have in our hand. The first thing I do, and a lot of you probably already know, is that I want to write the value of each coin on top of it. What value will I write on top of a penny? One And what value will I write on top of a dime? I've done one dime, where do I go next? When I talk about my students, I always like to start by saying, I hope that I've taught the next president, um, I hope that I've taught the next college professor, and um, I hope that I've taught the next pediatrician, and um, I believe those things about my students. And so they do definitely come in with many deficits. They um, are behind in reading, they're behind in math. Our number sentence is 97 minus 48. What is the first thing that I need to do to solve this problem? So what is often required is really investing the students in the learning itself and then also finding ways to remediate the gaps to fill in what's missing without jumping two years behind or jumping a year behind. These students can definitely succeed. I don't have any doubt as to whether or not they can. I just hope that we give them the skills that they need to achieve that. Let me see some silent hands. 
I really agreed with Teach America's mission that all students really deserve an excellent education and I want to try and provide the same kind of education that I got to them. I've gained a sense of possibility that we really can educate students who may not have had the same opportunities as everyone else. That we really can uh, like solve the educational problem that we have here. Teaching is a, is a really hard, demanding, challenging job uh, and such an important um, job um, in our country and in our, in our community. Um, and so I think you know, the, the dedication um, that our folks and all teachers bring to this work is just absolutely, absolutely remarkable.